In this problem, uh, we are given a ball that we draw from a certain height h, let's call it h1, on the floor. The ball then undergoes a collision with the floor and rebounds us to a maximum height of h2, which is smaller than h1. Now, because it's not equal to it, because it's smaller, you can conclude that the collision was inelastic. The question is, what is the, what is the impulse that the floor exerts on the ball during the collision? And what is the average force that the floor, that the floor exerts on the ball if the duration of the collision is delta t? Well, we know that impulse is equal to the change in momentum of the ball. The impulse that the floor transfers to the ball is equal to the change in momentum of the ball. Or we can say P final minus P initial. Which is equal to mass times V final minus mass times V initial. Or we can take mass out of the parentheses, so V final minus V initial. Now let's first find the magnitudes of V final and V initial. Let's look at the V initial first. V initial is the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground. So we can use conservation of energy here. We can say that potential energy of the ball at height h1 is converted entirely into the kinetic energy of ball, uh, the kinetic energy of the ball at the bottom. So if I do that, I can say that mgh1 is equal to mv initial squared over 2. If I cancel m, I get v initial equals 2gh1 square root. So this is the initial velocity of the ball, that is the velocity of the ball just before the collision. Now, right after the collision, the ball has a velocity pointing upwards and rebounds to height h2. Now, using the same logic, you can conclude that the magnitude of the final velocity is equal to 2gh2 square root. So now we need to plug in this velocity into this equation. But before that, we need to define a positive direction. So let's say this upward direction is positive. So impulse is equal to m times v final. Remember, v final is the velocity of the ball right after the collision and is therefore pointing upwards in the positive direction, in the positive y direction. So let's say this is our y axis, the positive y direction. So this is 2g h2 square root minus v initial. v initial is just before the collision. And just before the collision, the ball is moving downwards. So its velocity is negative. It's opposite to this chosen positive direction. So we have to say minus of, of minus 2gh2. So two minuses. Now minus cancels minus and you get plus. So this becomes m square root 2g can be taken out and then here you have h2 plus h1 in the problem we are given the values for the mass which is point 15 times 2 times 9.81 free fall acceleration square root of h2 which is 0.96 plus 
plus square root of 1.25 in each one. Now, if you do the math, this should give you 1.39, and the units are kilogram meter per second. Now, remember that impulse is a vector quantity, so we should say that final answer for impulse is 1.39 unit vector unit vector j because we're using y-axis, so unit vector j kilogram meter per second so that's the impulse now, how do we calculate the average force? the average force that the floor exerts on the ball during this collision the average force is equal to the change in momentum over that time interval during which we have that collision delta P is the same as impulse so that's 1.39 unit vector J over the time instant which is given to be point 0.1 second so you get 13.9 unit vector J Newtons for the average force exerted on the ball by the floor